All right, my friends. God bless you. We're here. We're live on air. And uh, well, we got headlines. We got to delve into the headlines. Do we really have to? Do we really need to? Is it necessary? Listen, it's just proving the hour in which we're living in. The purpose, one of the, the purposes, one of the, the reasons why Emoaf, Open Your Eyes People, exists is to let you know the hour in which we're living in. We're called as watchmen on the wall. It's to prepare the body of Christ for the coming persecution. It's to let you all know what Jesus said is to come. He told us in Matthew chapter 24, in Mark chapter 13, and in Luke chapter 21, he said that you will know my coming by these signs. Can we read a little bit of what he wrote? Because we have headlines. And, and, and you know, you, you may be new tuning in. And you, you know, we just started with the headlines. You say, well, that's just, that's just a headline. No, well, we got to see what the word of God says. Matthew chapter 24, Jesus answers a very important, and I'll say purposely uh, spoken by the Lord through the disciples as to the following. Tell us, the disciples asked Jesus, tell us when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed, meaning give attention. Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. You know, a lot of precious Christians in the body of Christ read up until that point, and then they close the Bible, and they say, okay, it's just wars and rumors of wars. The end is not yet. Next, let's just continue moving on. Let's just continue allowing the cares of this world to infiltrate us. Let's continue to be led away by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. We're not living in the last days because Jesus said that you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled. So he says, don't even worry about it because the end is not yet. No, listen, can we read this thing in its context, please? Jesus goes on to say, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences and earthquakes in various places all these are the beginning of sorrows. Verse 9. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Beloved, we are here. We are here. We, we are the last generation that the prophet spoke about. We are the last generation that was spoken of according to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he says here that... This generation, if you go down just a few verses down, verse 34. Actually, we'll read it from starting in verse 33. Jesus says, so you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. He said, when you see all these things, what are all these things? Nation rising up against nation, kingdom against kingdom. He's talking about pestilence and earthquakes and, 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 and people being hated for his name's sake and tribulation and being, and people being killed for his name. And that's what's happening all over the world. And he goes on to how, how people are going to be offended at one another and betray one another and hate one another. And this is what's happening. And then he says, uh, you know, that, that the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world. And this has already happened. So he says, when all these things, when all these things, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. He didn't say when you see a few of them. He said when you see all of them. We're seeing all of them in these last days. And then Jesus says something extremely important. He says this. He says, assuredly. 
meaning be sure of what I'm about to tell you. Know that I'm, what I'm about to tell you is perfectly sure. He says, assuredly, I say to you, this generation, what generation? He just explained it in the previous verse, the generation that sees all these things. He says, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. In other words, you can bank on it. We're here. With that being said, let's get into the breaking world news headlines, matching biblical prophecy. Zika! Ah, oh, what's going on with the Zika? Zika virus. The little mosquito who's gotten, that's gotten many people around the world on edge. Oh, mosquito, mosquito. Oh, are you covered by the blood of the lamb? Evangelist, you shouldn't be making fun of the Zika virus. There are people who are pregnant and they don't want to be bit. Cover them by the blood of the lamb. Cover them because the Lord said in the book of Genesis that he's given us authority over the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and over every creeping, crawling thing. That includes the Zika virus and that includes a little mosquito right here bzz, that's freaking people out. Zika virus threatening two billion Okay, what? That's a lot of people. The Zika virus is threatening 2 billion people across the world. Are you serious? It says here more than 2 billion people are at risk of the Zika virus, experts warn. As they reveal a new map that indicates those areas at greatest risk. The southeastern, the southeastern U.S., including much of Texas to Florida, have ideal conditions for the virus to spread. Meanwhile, a large portion of tropical and subtropical regions also have highly suitable environmental conditions and are at risk and are on the at-risk list. In total, these areas are inhabited by more than 20, excuse me, by more than 2.1 billion people. Researchers produce a fine-scale global map of Zika virus transmission as part of their study. They identified areas of the world with similar environments and socioeconomic characteristics as areas where the virus has so far been reported. They include areas that experience precipitation and have land cover as well as complex temperature-based virus incubation models. All right. You, you, you all remember the swine flu? You all remember the bird flu? First of all, there are many people that believe that this is a conspiracy. Has the government unleashed the Zika virus in mosquitoes to cause, excuse me, not to cost, but to cause, what's the word I'm looking for? To reduce global population. We're just asking the question. There are many people who, who say that that's the case. And is it the case? Has the United Nations with antichrist, Hitler-minded scientists concocted a virus that they dubbed Zika to help reduce the global population. Now, I say this because we know we're living in the last days. We know that there is uh, plans that the United Nations and world leaders uh, to help save the planet. Now, saving the planet in and of itself is not bad. That's fine. However, when you're talking about global population being reduced, when you're talking about that the reason why the fish is dying, the birds are dying, why the beast of the field is dying is because there's too many people on the planet and we got to do something to stop this overpopulation well what can we do we put enough abortion clinics over every every corner and in, in, in you know the poor areas and we put abortion clinics in every uh, poor country in third world countries and, and, and now we have abortion pills and it's not happening quick enough you know not enough babies are getting killed fast enough well what can we do let's make a virus and put it in a mosquito mosquitoes are everywhere and we'll make it to where if a pregnant woman gets this virus it can damage their baby in the brain because it, it apparently causes severe brain damage and a major disfigurement of the baby. And when we do that, offer the pregnant woman the opportunity 
to abort her baby because she'd be able to know through the doctor via ultrasound if the baby has indeed contracted the Zika virus and will, you know, be abnormal. Of course, no parent wants an abnormal child. Listen, that's the mentality of the last days agents of Satan that are working in the global government called the United Nations along with other global leaders. Don't think it's happening? Open your eyes, people. Make no mistake, it's happening. So the question is, uh, you know, is this why the Zika virus came out? Why is it targeting? All I know is this. What I know for a fact and truth is this. The Lord said in Psalm chapter 91, if you got your Bible, go with me. The Lord says in Psalm chapter 91, in verse 4, in verse, I'll read in verse 5, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. Nor of the arrow that flieth by day, nor of the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor of the destruction that layeth waste at noonday. This Zika virus is being dubbed as a pestilence. That is why they're saying that it's threatening over 2 billion people across the world. But if you are a Christian, if you are covered by the blood of Jesus, beloved, you have a promise from the Father. You have promises from his word. And his word makes it very clear that if we abide in the secret place of the Most High, if we abide under the shadow of the Almighty, that we will be able to claim his word, that pestilence that walks in darkness will be far from us. That we will not be afraid of it. Are we reading from the same Bible? Because that's what it says. That's what it says. He says, listen, now a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it's not going to come near you. In other words, God forbid people start dropping down like flies and ain't going to come near you because you're in Christ. You abide in Christ. Don't believe it? Read the word. Let's continue. we got more headlines. Days of Lot. Oh, dear. Days of Noah. Days of Lot. Sodom and Gomorrah. What is this? Listen. New novel. New novel makes the 50 shades of gray look like the Bible. Say what? It says here, British author Ellis Hilton, if she had her way, her new book, Maestra, would come with a warning label on it. She's quoted as stating, it would say, this is not a love story. She spoke with a post on the telephone from the Gritty Palace in Venice, Italy. She says, Maestra, which came out Tuesday as the first installment in a trilogy and is bound to be the It Beach Book of the Summer with a lot of graphic sex, several murders, and no romance whatsoever. Ah, uh, see how the devil's playing games? Making Fifty Shades of Grey look like the Bible, really? And see, that's blasphemous in and of itself because Fifty Shades of Grey is a lustful, ungodly, abominable book that's leading people straight to walk in the flesh and not in the spirit. goes on to say the following. It says here, it's been on the top five best-selling hardcover fiction list for the past five weeks in the United Kingdom. It's now sold in 38 countries. Its first draft sparked a seven-figure bidding war last summer, and it's already been made into a major Hollywood film with a screenplay by Aaron Cressida Wilson, who also penned the script for the girl on the train. Maestra is currently ranked number 48 in the psychological thrillers category on Amazon. Oh, my friends, these are the books that society is allowing to take over the Bible. I say that because you have the nonprofit atheist organizations, the freedom from religious organizations that are seeking to oust the Bible out of hotel rooms and replace it with Fifty Shades of Grey. And make no mistake about it, it'll probably include this ungodly book too, the Maestra. Now, if you were tuning into our broadcast earlier this week, you know that we reported to you how libraries, libraries across the United States are now putting on the danger book list, the Holy Bible. They have dubbed the Holy Bible one of the books that are considered dangerous and to put a warning out there before you uh, want to take it out of the library or even allow your children to read it. Yet, 
they've already done curriculum on Fifty Shades of Grey. And now again, make no mistake about it, this will be in universities, I'm sure, to learn uh, how it'll be labeled under, under some type of psychological or psychology course. Obama! Obama has moved to change the $5, the $10, and now the $20 bills. Why is he touching the currency? Why, why is this on the president's desk as one of the important things to do in his last term of office? This just shows where his priority is at. We got Russia threatening the U.S. with nuclear warheads. We got North Korea threatening the U.S. with nuclear warheads. We got ISIS threatening to come over across the border and do some time a bomb terrorist attack in malls and cities across the U.S. We got a uh, 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 uprising with, with you know, the, the, the racial tension in the U.S. taking place. We got continued murders happening in Chicago taking place. We got uh, uh, China threatening to continue cyber attacking and even their nuclear warheads. We got, war we got headlines on that. And this is on the top of the do list with President Barack Obama. Are you serious? Let's read it. It says here, Harriet Tubman will replace President Andrew Jackson as the face of the $20 bill. And Jackson will be moved to the back of the bill alongside an image of the White House. Wow. It goes on to say, Alexander Hamilton, the nation's first Treasury Secretary, will remain on the front of the $10 bill. But the back of the bill, which currently bears an image of the Treasury building, will feature leaders of the suffrage movement. The reverse of the $5 bill will be overhauled to include opera singer Marianne Anderson, the First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, and civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. It was said that the designs of all three bills are slated to be completed and unveiled by 2020, the 100th anniversary of the passage of the 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote. All right. Now, now we have a live church chat going on. We have a live church chat going on. I would love to know what you all think. Now, obviously, that not everybody's on the live church chat, and that's fine. But uh, I have an issue with this. I have an issue with anything being touched that represents our republic. Our currency, the U.S. dollar, represents our republic. It's one of the representations of our republic. I'm not saying it's the only thing, but it's one of them. So I have an issue when you have the Obama administration that is changing the faces of our currency. Now, I, I know many say, oh, well, you know, it's a sign of the times. America is evolving. You have universities, very liberal universities and professors, uh, you know, indoctrinating and brainwashing the college students into believing that you know, our nation is no longer a republic. You know, we, we, we are now open to socialism. We should move into the avenue of communism. We should, uh, you know, ignore the old white men that gave us the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights and our amendments and our Declaration of Independence. Who are they anyway but a bunch of white folk? We should just listen to the people in these last, in these days. I'm not saying the last days, although we are living in the last days. And just listen to the people. Forget the white privilege and change the currency. All right, let's see what some of you will have to say on church chat before I get into further as to how this relates to biblical prophecy. We have uh, Sister Brooke. She says, Harriet Tubman is okay, but why make all the other changes? All right. Sanford Truth says, totally detached from reality. Melissa says, me too, Anita. You got, uh, uh, you see, you got Dana that says uh, she won't read the book that we had just talked about, this ungodly book, but we'll go on here. It's, uh, we, you have here, Sister Karen says, I don't think Obama ever stopped doing drugs. He is so disconnected. Okay, now. You have Maj Ebeck says, that means withdraw your money before they make it monopoly money. All right. Uh, okay, so that's going on in the live church chat on our live stream channel. Also, Stand for Truth, you said it's against the Founding Fathers. It's a mockery. Exactly. Lorna says Obama is a narcissist. He will do everything to cause anger, division, and confusion. Come on now. You're saying something there. So this is what is going on. 
Uh, let me go to my YouTube church chat and see what you all have to say there. Chosen for Christ says, as an African-American woman, I can't even deal with nonsense. There are seriously things going on, Mr. So-called President. All right. Uh, Anna says they were never presidents. Uh, and, 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 all right. So we, we, we have uh, uh, quite a few people who are just sounding off on this. This is my issue with the whole, with the whole changing of our currency. I, I already said my issue. The issue, obviously, is that it represents a republic. And the fact that they're changing what represents a republic, what represents how this nation was established and founded and honoring the um, uh, men, you know, uh, who, who helped establish our nation is, uh, is weird. I don't like it. Uh, there's, an underlying, uh, there's an underlying agenda to it. And um, it will cause division. But I have to add something biblically. Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13 talks about currency being changed in the last days. Now, obviously, I'm not dubbing this the mark of the beast, but the fact that it is now easy that the Obama administration just decided to just change the faces on our currency here in the U.S., I believe is a major sign of the times and conditioning people to be ready to have the currency change worldwide. Now, somebody may say, come on, evangelist, that's far-fetched. No, it's not. No, it's not. Go with me to Revelation chapter 13. Let me just read this particular portion of scripture to you. Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13 it states here in verse 16 that the Antichrist will cause all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to take and receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads so that no one may buy or sell except one who has a mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name here is wisdom. Let him who has an understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man. His number is 666. So again, the changing of our currency not only will bring division, not only is a stab in the back to our republic here in the U.S., but it's also conditioning people here in the U.S. and really around the world to accept a society where currency will be changed for the better, for the, for the good of all mankind. For instance... The Obama administration changing our $5 or $10 and $20 bills is for the sake of unity in the U.S., which is not going to bring unity. It's going to bring divisiveness. He, you know, they're also doing it because they believe we, know, we need to catch up with the times. Um, this is a major sign of the times. we, we got more headlines. we just got to move on. It's stunning, the hour in which we're living in and just the changes that are taking place. Hijab! Hijab Day comes to Paris University. Paris University, it says here, students at an elite Paris University sparked fierce debate Wednesday by inviting classmates to wear the Muslim veil for a day in a bid to demystify a practice that is highly divisive in France. Students at Science Po urged women to take part in Hijab Day. It says here, if you think all women should have the right to dress as they wish and have their choice respected. France is currently grappling with rising Islamophobia after a wave of terror attacks by jihadists. And the student's Facebook page said that those agreeing to put on the veil would experience the stigmatization experienced by veiled women in France. A dozen students handed out flyers at the university by a table covered in colorful headscarves with a sign reading, France got 99 problems, but hijab ain't one, which is adopted by a hit by a U.S. rapper, Jay-Z. All right. All right. So, you know, if you go to this university and, uh, you know, you want to wear a hijab or just be ready to wear a hijab, that'll be your new job, to wear a hijab on hijab day. It's a sign of the times. Uh, we're looking at an increase of Islamophobia. 
because uh, how Islam, uh, which is a religion that uh, tortures women, ostracizes women, cuts off the heads of Christians, and is being used right now by the terrorist groups uh, called ISIS, Al-Shabaab, Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda, and more, to uh, do their uh, deeds. Uh, their deeds are found in what's called the Quran. There are many verses in the Quran that uh, justifies, unfortunately, the acts that these terrorist attacks have and are continuing to commit among men, women, and children. Now, somebody may say, come on, evangelist, nowhere in the uh, uh, Quran does it state that, uh, you know, uh, you know, killing uh, men, women, and children are okay. Well, I, 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 have, to, I have to give you a few verses then of, of what the Quran has to say. Uh, there are key verses in the Quran. Uh, in our Holy Bible, we have verses. Uh, they have in their Quran uh, what's called Surah, S-U-R-A. And so I just want to read to you a few verses or a few Surahs from the Quran. Uh, surah chapter 5 verse 33 says, Maim and crucify the infidels if they criticize Islam. Surah chapter 8 verse 12 says, Terrorize and behead those who believe in scriptures other than the Quran. Surah chapter 9 verse 5 says, When the opportunity arises, kill the infidels wherever you catch them. Surah chapter 2 verse 191 states, Slay the unbelievers where you find them. And Surah chapter 9 verse 29 says, Kill the Jews and the Christians. You can't get any more plainer than that. Now, um, this is probably not a good idea. We got more headlines. More headlines. Oh, my friends, there's so much, so much. All right. Continued weird, erratic weather patterns happening across the world. Oh, we need to lift the precious people of India up in prayer. Many may say, well, you know, they believe in other gods. They believe in other deities. They worship about a million false idols in that nation. And it's no wonder why judgment has hit that nation. Stop. Because the U.S. and other Western nations will be next. In this case, India does certainly worship a lot of false idols. A lot of them have added Jesus Christ to their collection of lucky rabbit's foots. However, we have to pray for these people because God says that it's not his will that any man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Look at this headline. It says here, India. India is crippled by extreme weather as 100 million have been exposed to floods. 100 million exposed to floods. Let's read the article. It says here, high temperatures and a crippling shortage of a rainfall in India is forcing schools to close and communities to ration drinking water. In Chennai, the oppressive heat currently gripping the southern Indian city has led to workers demanding an allowance for working in stifling factories and vets offering advice on caring for pets to avoid dehydration. While some rains would have been a blessing in disguise, the rain gods have ditched Chennai according to a reporter from Skymen. It says here, it would have been hard to imagine such a situation four and a half months ago, following the heaviest rainfall more than a century at the end of last November. It says here that the river, one of the main rivers there, Adyar River, which runs through the center of Chennai, surged, causing muddy water to pour over the walls of nearby apartments, blocks, and into the streets, Thousands were forced to flee their homes and hundreds died. Ah, oh, what does the Bible have to say about this? In the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 25, it states the following. Luke, chapter 21, verse 25 says, And there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and on the earth a distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring, flooding, massive flooding, hitting India. Father, we pray for the people of India. Father, we ask that you cover them, Lord. Please let no one else perish. Please let them call on the name of Jesus Christ alone. Help them. Bless them with your grace and mercy, Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Amen.